In May 1993, I was asked to go to Russia to teach business to women shortly after the fall of communism. It was a life-changing experience to get to know the valiant women who were bewildered by capitalism, yet were determined to make a go of it. Therefore, when I was asked again six months later, I volunteered with even greater enthusiasm. I was looking forward to both the one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions and working directly with newly privatized cooperatives where hundreds of women worked. Unfortunately, I landed in Moscow two hours after the uprising of the Russian parliament against Boris Yeltsin had erupted. When I entered the city, I saw fighting on a bridge where the police carrying white shields fought peasants with pitchforks and other people who threw rocks at them. When I asked questions in the Soviet fashion, I became a troublemaker to my handlers. And on the third night, when the militia swept through the hotel, I was threatened with jail. In spite of the $500 I paid, I had to go into hiding. In the morning, when I left the hotel, I was not allowed to take my luggage. Luckily, in the afternoon, the uprising was quelled and the American embassy that had been shut down for three days reopened. They put me in a safe hotel for the night, retrieved my luggage, and whisked me out of the country on the first morning flight. That event launched my writing career. At first, I wrote to make sense of the experience and to understand the political and economic mayhem that bred so much corruption. But mostly, I wanted to write about the Russian women with whom I bonded and whose courage I grew to admire. Their life, unbearable under Soviet regime, only became worse during this transition time. The protagonist of Hotel Moscow is Brooke Fielding, a 38-year-old daughter of Holocaust survivors. She has grown up in a very sad home where she was a stand-in for all of her parents' lost relatives. She never felt that she was her own person. She was Holocaust out. She wanted a different life and a different. she was trying since her childhood to escape who she was and the legacy that she was told she had to do and that is to remember she did not want to remember she wanted a different identity she didn't want to stop to be being jewish but she didn't know what it, it meant to be jewish when you're not defined by the holocaust so I decided to send her to Russia. 